Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm going to be quite honest with you all here. This build I'm about to cover has been seen and used by thousands of players already, but I want to add my input to the mix as well. The Giant Falcon and Graviton Lance build is probably the best build around for pure volatile and clearing chaos wherever you go. It just packs so much damage and heat that no matter what you face, the given build can take on and do some amazing damage just from the two items alone. Using this build will of course grant Devour tons of invisibility, tons of volatile rounds, tons of grenades, a flexibility of void weapons to use, and one of the best supers in the game for improving your playstyle and more. I'll try and keep this short, but informed as much as possible just for you. To start, you're going to want to have Vanishing Step where dodging makes you invisible. Then you want Stylus Executioner where defeating a weakened enemy grants True Sight and Invis. These here will be the bread and butter of the build in terms of applying consistent volatile rounds and invis on demand. Investment for mobility and strength stat in terms of support and invis stat won't be required so much here compared to past versions. The fragments used are Echo Obscurity where doing the finish of the target makes you invisible. Echo of Starvation where picking up a Void Breach or Overpower grants Devour. Echo of Persistence where Void Buffs applied to you last longer and Echo Remnants where Lingon Grenade durations are increased. Although Echo Instability is usually recommended as the go-to Volatile's Rounds access route, the following build can avoid using it this time, as long as they keep and keep on using the buff from our aspects in their both timely manner. Since our Zotic states it will trigger Volatile Rounds upon leaving Invis, and then will re-trigger Invis via Stylus Executioner trait, it simply applies that we'll be dipping in and out of Invis with volatile rounds packed no matter what. This simple action would allow us to apply Echo of Starvation to the mix and easily get Devour on hand for longer lasting survivability and grenade regen all in one. There's no cooldown to this, so you can keep doing this as long as the enemies are coming, which for GMs with room clearing activities is great. For modern stats, having a high discipline stat and resilient stat will be recommended for maintaining the build from here onwards. Resilience at tier 9 will grant users a 27% damage reduction against targets, which will be helpful since we do have a low recovery speed this time. As we have invis on demand available, you don't really need to do much here since you're rarely taking too much damage, although having the following is helpful nonetheless. A discipline at tier 10 will then grant you a 1 minute 16 cooldown when using vortex grenades, which are quite high to use and maintain. However, we do have ways to reduce this effect. For example, having Grenade Kickstart will grant us a 34.4% Grenade Energy Return on 4 armor charges. Then we have Orbs of Restoration which will grant us a 10% Ability Energy back for abilities with less energy. And lastly, Distribution for the flat 4% Ability Energy Return. As a heads up, we do also have Devour available via our Fragments which will also grant us Grenade Energy as well. All in all, you should then have enough energy being returned to warrant the use of the more stronger grenades. This will then leave you room for additional mods, such as Charged Up giving us plus 1 to orbs, armor charges health, then having stacks and stacks will grant us 2 orbs of power collection rather than the 1. Having Harmonic or Void Siphon will allow us to create orbs of power while on the go, while Powerful Attraction will make it easier to collect the orbs once our class ability is free. Lastly, having Impact Induction and Bolstering Detonation will help with gathering energy back for quick usage of mobility and strength based abilities. Now lastly the weapons being used will be Graviton Lance which has become a fan favourite for players to use wherever they go. Its ad clearing exotic trait is great for the absolute chaos it can bring with the additional damage from the secondaries having the effect of tracking and also dealing much higher damage against mages. Applying volatile runs to the weapon makes it even more powerful than it should be with the additional add-on allowing taking down of even higher rank and file in endgame. This makes it even more easier to use from here. Applying volatile rounds to weapon makes it even more powerful than it should generally be, with the additional damage making it even more easier to take on the rank and file in endgame. With as many buffs, the weapon now feels complete to be used however you like, with little to no restrictions applied to it. For heavy, I have the retrofit escape paid with target lock and fourth time the charm, a popular heavy that did go through a meta phase at one point. The following was great to use against bosses when volatile rounds was given, 
as the weapon could chew few shields and health in a matter of seconds. Now with a few adjustments to its perk, it does still do fairly well against all types of enemies, but nothing as OP back in the day wise. A great weapon to pair with the build since the volatile balance access we have will be freely available and that extra bit of damage on top of the perks is pretty nice. The Gyro Falcon and Graviton Lance combo is one of the most popular builds you will see if you ever mention Destiny players, what's the best void weapon to pair with the given exotic? Now I will keep this overview pretty brief as it's been covered multiple times over and except for a few things changed to the fragments, everything else is quite similar to what most people choose. With aid of Stylish Executioner on hand, the following build will allow players to enhance their overall damage via volatile rounds while also triggering a chain reaction based effect via Graviton Lance Exotic effect. With the two similar and yet volatile effects being combined into one, it presents an all new Void trait which is even more violent than its predecessor, but really good with dealing with the more tougher enemies in most endgame content. As such example, like mages and ultras, tend to rely on the user equipping good special and heavy weapons for dealing with them. And yet, the following build can avoid that if everything goes as planned. It's fantastic with crowd control and can deal some significant damage to many bosses as long as the amount of pressure is applied. On top of that, the sheer survivability of the build with providing invisible volatile hits means that you can sneak away or even start engagements depending on how you feel. Just like many Void Hunter builds, the following provides a nice ease of use, survivability and great attack rate that not many builds can achieve. Ultimately though, to get the best out of the build, you want to use this in GMs to where enemies are much more tougher than normal but actually feel like butter once the following attachments do kick in. If you haven't given this a try yet, then I would recommend you try now. Those that have given it a try, maybe try some more. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.